Hi guys, so it's me, Mia, and today I'm without Bailey, sadly, but I'm just going to be doing this embossing video real quick, and this makes their cards look so much more professional in my p opinion, and you see them on professional cards all the time, like at Hallmark, anywhere, any card store, and it made me want to keep doing cards because it was so much fun. And what you need is this heat embosser. I got mine from Paper Source, which is at the 650 degrees, so be careful. And so a few other materials that I'll announce in a minute. Before we start the embossing part of this video, I'm going to show you the materials that will still need this heat embosser. I got mine from Paper Source, and it reaches at the 650 degrees, so keep your fingers clear when using it at all times. Next, you're going to be needing this clear ink pad. And if it looks dirty, it's fine. It actually is just the ink from other stamps. All you need it to do is to keep the embossing powder in place. You're going to need a piece of paper or cardstock for your embossing. Next, you're going to need some embossing powder. I also got this from Paper Source. You use it with the heat embosser to help create the imprint on the stamp. I have the colors blue and white, but you can use any colors you wish. It feels like soft, fine grains of sand. Next, you're going to need a stamp. I'm using this bicycle, but you can use any type of stamp or do as much stamping on the card as you want. Now let's hop right in. These are the materials you'll need for your first step. Your piece of paper or cardstock, the stamp of your choice, and your clear ink pad. Open your ink pad and be sure to get enough ink on your stamp. Your stamp should look clear and maybe a bit glossy and shiny on the rubber part. Now, make a design on your piece of paper or cardstock with your stamp. You can use as much stamping or as much ink as you want. Just be sure you have enough. Now you can set your ink pad and stamp aside. Next, what you're going to need is your tray and your embossing powder. I didn't introduce the tray because it's basically just a tray with a spout at the end to dump the extra embossing powder into the container when you're finished. Now choose a color of embossing powder. I'm going to use this white one. Don't worry about using too much. You can just dump the excess back into the spout and then you'll use that to dump it back into the container later. Slowly and gently dump the excess embossing powder back into the container. If you notice that there's a bit of another color embossing powder in the container, it's okay. It's probably because you used the tray with another color earlier and it got in there. It won't affect your next design. Set all your materials aside except for your paintbrush and embosser. You could use this paintbrush to shake off any extra embossing powder where you don't want it to stick and stay permanently in the design. This helps with bigger designs. It's not really needed for small designs unless you make a bit of a mistake. Now take your embosser. This reaches up to 650 degrees, so be careful. Now we're going to do the embossing. Keep your fingers away from the edge. You can hold your paper or card stuck by the tip with one finger or not hold it at all for little designs. I suggest not holding it for little designs, but for bigger ones it may be a good idea. Move your embosser in slow, round, circular movements. This may take a few minutes to complete. I've just finished the embossing. As you can see, my bike has appeared. You can't feel the embossing powder much anymore. It just feels glossy, warm, and a bit elevated. This makes your cards look a lot more professional as I said in the beginning. When you first touch it, it may be hot, but it won't burn your finger. If you're really sensitive, then you should probably wait a minute or two for it to cool off. Thanks for watching. Bye!